Hi guys, uh, in this screencast I'm going to talk to you all about exponential and logarithmic models. And the first one is a familiar one based on the activity we just did recently with the beans, and that's exponential growth. So as you all know, it starts out slowly and then gets grows very rapidly. It has a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis and it passes through the point one comma or sorry zero comma one. Uh, let me clean that up. There we go. Zero comma one. Okay. <clears throat> now depending on what A and B are, that's going to change how fast this thing increases. Exponential decay is the same function with one important difference that there's a negative in front of the exponent. And so that means that it's going to flip flip itself over the y axis. All the positive x's will become negative and all the negative x's will become positive. So instead of starting out slowly and rapidly increasing, it's rapidly decreasing and then it slows down. So that's exponential decay. Most famous example of that is um, using half-lifes of radioactive isotopes. Okay, a Gaussian model is also an exponential function and it forms uh, what is commonly referred to as a bell curve. And so it looks like this. Okay. And um, depending on what B is, uh, it'll be shifted left or right. And then uh, logistic growth is used to model populations because populations do not increase exponentially forever, do they? They start out slowly, they increase very rapidly, and then as they reach the carrying capacity of the environment, they level off. And so if you want to get a curve that looks like that, you'll use a logistic growth model. All right, so let's do some examples, okay? Uh, we're supposed to complete the table for a savings account in which interest is compounded continuously. So that means we're going to use A equals our principal times E to the RT. And in this example, P is 20,000. And our interest rate is 10.5%. So that is point 105t. And we want to find the time to double. So that means we're going to set it equal to 40,000. And we're going to solve for t. Since t is in the exponent, we will use logarithms to solve for t. And since it's a base e, we'll use natural logarithms. So 2 is equal to e to the point 1, 0, 5t and that means that the natural log of 2 will equal 0 0.105t natural log of 2 divided by 0.105t whoop don't want to divide the t do I will equal t and we're ready for our calculator And so I'm going to go natural log of 2, close parentheses, divided by 0 0.105. And it's going to take about 6.6 .6 years. Let me grab that for you. And there it is. OK. So our answer here is 6.6 .6 years. What's the amount after 10 years? Well, that means we're just going to put 10 in 4t. So I have 20,000 e to the point 105 times 10. Which means I have 20,000 e raised to the 1.05. 
and we're going to get fifty-seven thousand one hundred fifty-three dollars. Whoops. There we go. All right. Next, next example, the population P of Orlando, Florida for selected years can be modeled by P equals 101,659 e to the 0 0.021 t. So that's an exponential model. t equals 0 is the year 1970. So when will the population reach 225,000? So we're going to put in 225,000 and solve for t again. Okay, let me get my calculator. And I've got 225000 divided by 101659. And that's 221.21, etc., etc. So we're going to take the log of that. So I've got the natural log of 2.2133 equals 0 0.021t. And when we divide by that, I've got the natural log of my answer divided by 0 0.021. t is about 37.8 years. Okay. All right, next problem. Let's see. The number of bacteria in a culture is modeled by this. Okay, so we don't know K here. That's the new twist. But I do know that when T equals 5, N equals 300. So 300 is equal to 100 e to the 5k. That means the natural log of 3 will equal 5k. So k will equal the natural log of 3 divided by 5. And we get 0 0.2197. So when will it double? Well, we'll say that 2 will equal e to the point 2197t. So the natural log of 2 will equal point 2197t. And bring up the calculator again. And I'll do natural log of 2. Whoop, don't forget your parentheses. Divided by answer. About uh, 3 years, 3.15. Oh, hours. Sorry. 3.15 hours. OK, one more. Half-life problem. So I've got a radioactive isotope. The half-life is 1,599. That means that every 1,599 years, we have half of what we started with. And so we're going to say that uh, if we start with 1, then 1 half will equal the initial amount 1 e to the 1,599k. OK, so the natural log of 1 half is equal to 1599k. Calculator time. There we go. And I have the natural log of 0.5 divided by 1599. And notice we get a negative number because this is exponential decay. So our amount is 1 times e. Let's see, what it was that? I needed to copy that, didn't I? Let me grab that real quick. There we go.
e to the negative point zero 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 four three three five t. Okay, so what's the initial quantity if the amount we have after a thousand years is that much? Okay, one point five will equal our initial amount times e to the 1,000 years, so that's going to be negative point zero 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 zero. Nope, too many zeros, right? Four three three five times a thousand, and. Let me get that number. So that's going to be 1.5 divided by e to the negative point zero 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 four three three five times a thousand. 2.314 grams. So P equals 2.314. Okay, so that's it. I'll see you all next week. Have fun with exponential models.